Welcome to Dark Blood's Garage. This is a Mercury 5 liter, a 305. This is out of a 1990s Bayliner. Uh, the engine does run, it doesn't have that many hours. Uh, it is pretty clean uh, and all that. However, this was brought to me because at one point it wasn't winterized correctly. And if anything, if anybody knows anything about boat motors, you know that you're supposed to winterize these things by draining the plugs draining out the water and so forth. If you don't do that, this is basically what happens. So the water that is inside the block that doesn't get drained, it freezes and then it expands and it causes the block to actually crack. So we have that kind of damage on this side of the block as well as the uh, passenger side uh, over here. So best case scenario is just the outside walls of the block. Worst case scenario, it's the block, the heads, the water pump, and possibly water mixed with the internals of the engine. So everything is gonna get inspected and tolerance checked before we assemble this. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna pop off the valve covers and we're gonna pop off the intake over here. Uh, one quick note that you can do to help you in the future if you're doing something like this is you put a little mark over here with a, a marker what that does is it allows you to put the distributor back into the correct location just so it helps you uh, with the initial startup. So as we can see here, the rockers look pretty clean. They're just a standard stock stamped rocker from GM. You can also see with this retainer that this is obviously a roller motor, which means it has a roller camshaft. So before we start pulling the whole valve train apart, it's important to note to keep everything in order. So keep all the lifters in the exact same order that they came out of. Keep the corresponding rocker with the corresponding push rod and the corresponding valve. All these components have their own individual wear pattern and you don't want to mix up that wear pattern with other components of the engine. So a quick tip for removing heads is usually when you install the head, there's a torque sequence and it's followed with a spiral pattern. And this is to ensure that the head gasket gets a nice even squish across the entire surface. And it also ensures an even torque sequence for all the bolts. So it's good practice to reverse the sequence when you're removing the head. The other thing is if you have an aluminum head and you unbolt from the left to the right or right to the left, what can happen is your head might actually bow from all the excess force from the last remaining bolts. off now. So we're going to go ahead and have a quick look at these bores and you can usually tell if the, if the engine is really rough. So because this is a marine engine, uh, when it sits, it obviously will build up a little bit of surface rust. That's normal, nothing really to be alarmed of, but uh, things like this over here are a little bit uneasy. This, this motor obviously sat a little bit longer than it liked to be sitting. Uh, but the other thing to look at is to see if there's any crosshatch patterns going on here, which this block does have it, so it is 
pretty clean. There is still a pattern there. What you don't want to see is absolutely no cross hatching. Because that'll tell you that this motor's obviously got a lot of kilometers or a lot of hours in this case. Other than that, that's what these uh, pistons look like at the moment. This bolt doesn't look like it has any real sealant in it. Bolts are going to have some sort of sealant that would have passed through here. And this is to prevent the water and the oil from mixing back and forth. Because these are not blind holes. These are through holes and they will go into the water cavities. This bolt didn't have any of that. So let's go ahead and have a quick visual over here. Uh, we can see this bore obviously still has the cross hatches, still has the cross hatches. So this motor obviously doesn't have too many hours on it. So let's go ahead and remove the dipstick as it's in our way now. So we're gonna go ahead and let this motor uh, drain while it's upside down here. Uh we can go ahead and remove the oil pan so we can get access to the crank and everything else under here. So let's go ahead and just... 